Hello and welcome back. If you follow the channel, you know that I recently posted a video about a trio of awesome vintage generators from the HP 3300 series. These are instruments that cover a decade from 1965 to 1975. But while I was making the video, it turns out that the granddaddy of them all, the HP 3300, needed some attention. These are old analog instruments which have often been neglected. They have many fine adjustments and usually need to be fully recalibrated before they perform as intended, which for HP is usually pretty tight within a percent or two of ideal. And that's how it started with the HP 3300A. Actually, it occurred to me that although the 3300 frequency is right on the money, it's not quite symmetric and the sinusoidal shape is not quite sinusoidal either. You can see it has a fat bottom and a narrow top. And then if I do the triangle, I think the square wave the top is wider than the bottom, so the, the, the two sides of the, 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 the two branches that are charging and discharging the capacitors are not equal. So, it's a good thing because we'll, uh, we'll get to see what's inside. I'm sort of curious. So the way this works, it's actually a triangle wave generator uh, that's made by charging and discharging a capacitor at constant current. And there is a positive current source and a negative current source that are controlled by the big knob in the front. Then there's an amplifier and there, there's a level detector. And when it detects that the level is high, it will flip the current sources and use a negative one instead and discharge a capacitor until it goes to the minus level. And then it, it goes back and forth like this and generates this triangular wave which is very much what a 555 does, right? This, this is exactly the same thing in much bigger. Uh, that allows you to, um, by selecting the capacitor and the charging current, to cover this huge range of um, frequencies. Uh, they, they, they make the sine wave by shaping the triangular wave into a sine using a, a bunch of uh, diode circuits. And the square wave is just the output of the level detector. So that's basically how it works. So because of this design, you need a positive current source and a negative current source to be exactly matched to give you a symmetrical waveform. This is not tuned properly in my instrument. So the capacitor in question, uh, there are a whole bunch, they are here. It's 1965, but they have a MOSFET. So these are the current sources. Uh, it charges the capacitor and then you have an op amp with a uh, high impedance MOSFET as an entrance and a differential pair and an, an emitter follower. So if you don't have ICs, well, you make it uh, with effort with transistors. Uh, and you can even see that this is, is in an oven. So the current source is, an, is in an oven. That's quite interesting. So that's for stability. So I'm somewhat intrigued to see what's in this one. Voila! Wow, it's nice and clean in there. All right. Here is our oven. Is it warm? It sure is. So the oven is still working, which is great because one of the things that happened with those oven things is that the, the heating element fails. And it's so beautifully made, my goodness. And super extra clean. Okay, so let's align this beast and see if we can make it perfect. All right, so to orient ourselves quickly in this instrument, transformer, interactive fan capacitors, and the, the power supply card. This card, half of it is control of the uh, current sources, and uh, the other half is the uh, capacitors with some trimmers. Uh, this one is on this half the uh, level detector and flip-flop on this half is the uh, diode shaper uh, for making this uh, the sinusoid out of the uh, triangle wave the amplifier for channel a channel b and this is the um, plug-in 
the uh, the adjustments uh, go with the functions. Here are the four pots for the four power supplies. Here are uh, four adjustments for the current sources. Here are two adjustments for the uh, higher frequency ranges and those are trimmers for the capacitor. And here are two adjustments for the sine wave uh, to make it perfect. And finally on each amplifier you have a level adjustment and a compensation adjustment to make the square wave perfect. And that's uh, all we have to worry for this, uh, the, sign, uh, the, the generator part. Uh, the rest of the adjustments, there are a few for the uh, door. And I have taken the two middle cards out of their cages. And here is the card that has all the capacitors that you use to do the charge and the discharge. They are all over here is our little differential amplifier with the differential pair and the emitter follower. And here are uh, external components to the oven. They are the precision resistors that control the current source. And um, I probably can't see it on the camera, but it's like 2260 ohms, 0.25%. So they are quarter percent precision resistors. This card is uh, the flip-flop and level detector here. So there are two transistors that are the flip-flop, two that are the uh, uh, level detectors. I can't remember which is which. Uh, some resistors look a little tired, but I measured them, they are perfect. So it's just cosmetic. And then you have the uh, sine wave, uh, the triangle wave to sine wave adjuster with all its uh, diodes and only two adjustments for that circuit. And for the electrocurious, here is the power supply card. And it's more or less a standard power supply. Uh, you have some discolor resistors, but I checked them. Once again, they are uh, right on the dot, so it's just cosmetic. And the only special thing about this power supply is that the sensitive part, the voltage reference, is inside the oven. Uh, besides that, it's, it's a completely normal linear power supply. And uh, finally the drawer and that's the phase lock uh, and, and gate thing. It's actually quite complicated compared to the rest of the instrument. Uh, but this one works just perfectly so don't, I don't have to touch it or go into the details of it. The manual is available of, online if you're interested. So as always with analog instruments, the first thing is to adjust the power supplies. And this was actually off, should be minus 26.5, and it was minus 26.3. This one. And that's 27.3. This is completely off. Had been inspected, but not adjusted. 26.5? Dancing a little, I'm going to check it at the scope, see if I have any ripple. Nope, that looks good. Okay, we got our 26.5 eventually, and then yeah, minus 20 volts first, and then plus 20 volts second. And that they want to a tenth of a volt. Okay. And then. Okay, 20.001. So we got it, we got our power supplies. The next adjustment is actually the symmetry. And we first get it at uh, one second uh, on square wave, and I should have half a second both ways. We measure the period before it going up and going down and going up and, and, and vice versa, and it should be equal. So right now we have 450. One way, and 480 the other way. So yeah, so that's definitely not right. It's 485 on one. I can really not move it. And it's 458 on the other. So it's 
So my two current sources are imbalanced and I don't have enough range to bring them back in balance. Aha! Uh -huh. And that's exactly what you don't want to happen. I can't get the symmetry into adjustment, not even close. The manual says that you can change some factory pre-selected resistors if that happens, but this seems so far out of whack that I am thinking something more serious is wrong with the instrument. So before I go on to something more drastic to get my symmetry right, I wanted to make sure the caps were ok and they are, they measured 1000 microfarad each, so these are fine. And here's a little peak in the oven and that looks good too so it has this insulating material but something has gone out of whack somewhere so it could be transistors in there it could be a resistor imbalance somewhere else so since this is all a little sus um, I wanted to check if my oven regulation works and it's on the power supply schematics and there is inside the oven a thermistor and then one transistor and then there's a power transistor which then feeds back into the heating elements which are actually resistors distributed on on the board I, th I think these are the big resistors we just saw and I think that's the transistor over here and I'm measuring at the collector and we should have a 15 voltage is what the uh, spec says and I have millivolts so it looks like it's connected to ground all the time so would my temperature regulation not work and be uh, uh, the, the heater would be on all the time so that's transistor let's test it so I disordered the transistor and it looks like an OK transistor. 0.6 volts across the two junctions. And nothing in reverse voltage, no short between collector and emitter. So not the transistor, at least on the simple test. I just didn't wait enough so and it was just not heating up yet so here we go waited a while and this is back to uh, 15 volts so that was it it was just not hot enough so it was giving it full chooch so it looks like my temperature control is working that should keep raising up as the temperature approaches stabilization not my problem so something else going on so manual says if you can't reach the symmetry you want you change this resistor here up or down it says minimum 3k maximum whatever you want and right now it's the default 5.7 but I'm so far off I shouldn't have to change this resistor so we'll, we'll try it but something's puzzling so I can make it work, uh, now the, the top and the bottom are similar here, but I have to put a resistor that's a hundred times more than it should be, I'm at 680k. By the way, this is my handy dandy switchable resistor and capacitor box, really nice to adjust a component over an unknown range. You'll see later that I also have precision resistor decayed boxes for finer tuning. Anyhow, I end up with a resistor that is so ridiculously far from nominal value that I still think that something else is going on. So something is probably wrong somewhere. It could be either the current source is wrong or the level detector is wrong, so it's switching at the wrong level. Or there's something wrong with the plugin because the uh, the plugin can't control the, the the current too, so it goes to the plugin, comes back. Uh, so I switched it completely out by putting this little plug that I tell you how to do. It didn't change anything, so not the plugin. I checked 
the uh, level of the switching uh, of the flip-flop and it switches at 0 volts and 20 volts perfectly on the dot so that's not that either so at that point I think it's the current source in the oven or it could be one of the resistors outside that's uh, gotten wrong on this board I checked the biasing resistors those are the precision 0.25 percent precision resistors and they are all right on the money so in the oven we go trying to figure out if a, a transistor there has gone bad okay this comes out pretty good with some asbestos i guess and So right away you see there is one transistor that's corroded. This one is corroded too. So if I look on here, Q5, Q6, Q7, which are the current source transistors, they are here, Q5, Q6 and Q7. And they don't appear to be in good shape at all. So here are my suspect transistors, but according to how it fails even those two look worse it looks like it's this one that's not behaving the pnp here those are two npns those are just low noise transistors and they are very very early transistors so any low, low noise uh, modern transistor that you put in there with good gain will just uh, be so much better than any of these so they are easy to replace so here's our transistor uh, and the lead's about to fall off it's so weak because of the rust and you can see it has this weird soft turn on it's very non-linear uh, let, let me poke a, a modern low noise transistor you change the transistor to a modern one uh, this one has lower gain but you can tell it's it's much healthier uh, and i don't know if the weirder curve are because it's an early transistor that's not quite perfect or is something wrong with it but i can change it with that one see what happens so on our oven board i checked the other transistor they look bad but they are actually good these ones are hermetic uh, these are not uh, so i changed the one that was rusted and this one the, 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 the lead is about to to fall off so that's changed uh, with the modern transistors. These ones, I put them on the uh, curve tracer. They are perfect and uh, there is no trace of corrosion in the leads. Uh, so they are all fine. And I put the new transistor in and it's still the same problem. At least worse. Can't make it symmetric. This is not long enough. And it's, this is jittery. So look what happens when I first power it on. This is completely jittery. Actually, you might also have spotted the problem at the beginning of my previous video. Listen to the tone as I switch the generator on. The HP 3310A from 1970. So you can hear the pitch changing abruptly and you actually even see it wobble on the scope. Uh, I think that's the problem we have here. Ah. It moves with this card over here. has to do with the power card. Okay, I got rid of the intermittent problem. This was just uh, contact in the connector. I just used deoxid on the connector. Now it's gone, but I'm still not symmetric. Uh, so none the wiser here. So I think I have found the other part of my problem here are the uh, resistor that adjust the symmetry so they adjust the uh, negative going part of at least the positive going part of the pulse and you see there are actually two branches 
and they get switched in depending on the speed of the oscillation and on the one I was using here it gets only switched at the point 0.1 and the point 0.01 range uh, and what happens is that the manual has been OCR'd and it looked like the manual asked me to put it in the times one range and move that resistor but it, it had dropped the point so what I really need is to be on the point one range when I adjust this and uh, be on the higher range when I adjust this one I still can't get symmetry on either but I am way close I can't quite converge I'm at 605 and 5 9, 8, and I can only go into other direction, but I'm pretty close. Oh great, I was just in the wrong range when trying to readjust this. The times 1 range is adjusted with another pot than the times 0.1 range. That's called operator error. Mind you, I still can't get it aligned with the correct procedure, but at least it is much closer. So, would I have been able to bring it back to spec with the original transistor still in? I actually don't know. I believe the rusty transistor was drifting and about to die, causing the symmetry problem in the first place. But this mishap was a blessing in disguise. It forced me to scrutinize the unit very closely, root out the rusted transistor before failure, and cure the supply instability. So. Uh, I think all I have to do now is indeed readjust the resistors. I'll, I'll end up with a resistor that's close to what was chosen in the factory. I change the transistor, so I expect that uh, this resistor have to change anyhow. But I have to redo the resistors from the factory selected resistors, but now it works. So this is the low frequency one, 962 on half the period. 962 other half of the period. Now if I go to the 100 calibration, 0.997 on half of the period and 0.997 on the other half of the period. So all I need to do is get resistors that are like this and I am not perfectly symmetric. We fixed it. Okay, and we finally get to the adjustment we wanted to do in the first place, which is get the sinusoid correct. Down here is an interesting circuit. So that's the one that transformed the triangle waveform into a sinusoidal waveform. And I have it here in a blown up fashion. And the way it works is quite clever with diodes. So uh, it's symmetric, so you can ignore the bottom and only concentrate on the top, right? So here at the top you have two uh, voltage regulators. Uh, one gives you 16 volt on one end and 12.5 volts on the other end. And there is a ladder of resistors, so this this around here, here at 16 volts, and then progressively these points are at strategic points down to 12.5 uh, volts. And what happens is that, uh, so I, I uh, see if I look at the bottom, I can tell the bottom they have the same thing, uh, but they have a ladder from 4 volts to 8 volts. So I suppose. What comes out of here is a triangle wave that goes from, what's the maximum here, 16 to minimum 4 volt. So that's what we should have at the entrance for this to work. And what happens is that uh, when it's somewhere in the middle, nothing turns on, goes straight to the differential amplifier. Uh, so it starts, so we, if we have our, our uh, wave like this, it starts around here, droop, it goes and follows this until uh, the signal goes no 12.5 volts plus something and then this diode here, so once again on the positive side, just ignore the bottom, this diode will turn on and will divert some current to here. So it will go like this. And then this diode will turn on and it'll go like this. And then this diode will turn on and go like this. And then eventually 
this diode has no resistor to it, so it's the top of, of, of the sinusoid, and then it goes down with little segments. So basically we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven segments. So you have seven segments on the way up, seven segments on the way down. Then you have another seven here and seven there. So you have 28 segments that should be more or less straight to make the sinusoidal shape and that's enough to give you a fairly low uh, second harmonic distortion. I'm very surprised. So what's happening is that you have a little tweak here to uh, get your voltage adjusted. You want um, this, the top of the triangle wave just kiss the 16 volt and the top and the bottom just kiss the, the, the 14 volt so you get the little flat segment at the top. So these are the adjustments we'll make. In the manual they instruct you to do the sine wave adjustment by looking at the output with a distortion analyzer. But I have better. I have my HP 8568 spectrum analyzer on the bench which I just repaired a couple episodes ago. So I'll use that instead and I will simply minimize all the undesirable harmonics. So this is a square wave full of harmonics. My fundamental is over there what kil at 1 kilohertz and this is 10. So you have the 10 first harmonics. This is a triangle. So that has less harmonics. And this is the sine wave. And then it's actually already pretty good, looks like a sine wave, but if we want to minimize distortion, then we tweak the diode bridge. Look at that, no more harmonics, they're all gone. All right, and that's it's, it's amazing how clean that is actually, except for a little bit of second harmonic, you don't have much compared to a triangle. And the square wave, the king of harmonics. It's just a little diode thingy. Amazing. That's what we took out of the instrument to get it perfect. So a transistor that was about to die. And two resistors that had to be changed so we could make it symmetric. That's it, not too bad. All right, so we have our perfectly adjusted instrument. Now it looks good. Looks like a real sine wave. The one thing I haven't checked is the how square is the square. Oh, the square is very square. I'll have to do a thing. Yeah, that's perfect. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Alright. Good instrument.